let's start with Kullervo's story. This is probably the most tragic story in the Kalevala, and it has ex inspired an awful lot of art, uh, both visual arts, music, uh, all kinds of uh, theater, and so on. So these are runo runos 30 and 36, and uh, and it's a, it's a relatively short story in the middle of the Kalevala, uh, telling about another person. But uh, at the end, at Lenru, of course, it, he ties it together with the other topics, uh, with Väinämöinen uh, making a comment about what happens to Kullervo. Uh, so uh, Kullervo has. Uh, has been, this probably doesn't show very well, but I'll, I'll post this also. So here's Kullervo, uh, another uh, inspiration uh, in the area of uh, visual arts. Kullervo uh, is being born, and when he is a baby, he already rips off his swaddling clothes. Uh, Kullervo's story. Uh, it, it, it covers an awful lot of area, it covers uh, very scary things about human existence, it covers, covers uh, sibling rivalry that starts with Kullervo's, uh, Kullervo's father and uncle, and the names of these two are um, Untamo is the uncle and Kalervo is Kullervo's uh, father. So Kalervo is the, the father, Kullervo is the son, and Untamo is the uncle. Um, it, it starts by a really kind of like very silly, uh, silly uh, feud between Kale Kalervo and Untamo. And uh, it's just like you know turf war. Which brother is going to be going to be fishing on somebody else's areas, or or uh, plowing on somebody else's areas? So it's it's just very typical of humankind that uh, these these two were feuding with each other for no reason, really. So what happens is Untamo comes and destroys the place where, uh, where uh, the Kalervo's place is, his brother's place, and it seems that everybody is being killed. However, um, however, uh, Untamo takes a young woman who happens to be pregnant and who happens to be pregnant with uh, Kullervo, and then uh, makes her into a slave in in his place, and then Kullervo is born, and Kullervo is going to be a slave as well for his uncle. So, uh, so uh, Kullervo is born and uh, shows from the very beginning that he is not an ordinary baby. He, um, he uh, rips off his swaddling clothes and, and uh, uh, pretty much declares that uh, he is going to be revenging, avenging his, uh, what, what Untamo had done to his father, Kalervo. So um, Kalervo, uh, promises this already as a child, Untamo hears uh, this and decides to kill him. So it's extremely, extremely cruel all around, but it, it seems that uh, Lenrud has uh, included this powerful, very powerful, inspiring story, inspiring kind, kind of like in the, in the sense that this is not how things should go. So we start with this feud by the brothers. That's not what should happen. It leads only to horrible things. So, uh, and then, then how to, it, it seems to have this pedagogical goal that, that this is not how things should do. So it should inspire to do things in a certain way and not the way that what happens in Kuller's story. Uh, so uh, Untamo wants to uh, wants to kill the child, and first uh, 
he tries to drown him. That's this is not the drowning. This is the second trial of trying to kill him. Uh, so he tries to drown him. He puts him in a barrel. They throw the barrel into the water. Uh, but Kularo cannot be killed. Uh, he, uh, they, they go and see whether the child is dead now, and they go and go and see what's going on. And he's gotten out of the barrel, is uh, fishing there uh, in the in the water. So they uh, then uh, he tries to he tries to burn uh, Kularo, and here you can see the the young boy who is being burned, or oh, that's, the, that's the uncle, what the uncle is doing, uh, doing because the uncle is afraid that this, this boy is going to be avenging his bad deeds to uh, Galervo, who was Galervo's father. And uh, he can't be burned when they come and, come and see whether the boy is dead after they set him, uh, set him on fire. There he is raking the ashes and, and as if nothing had happened. And uh, a third uh, thing is they try to hang the boy. This is, this is all like, you know, relatively famous art here. Uh, the, the, uh, they try to hang him on a tree and, uh, and when they come to see whether he has died, they find him carving words on this tree. And here's another rendering of the same situation. He's carving, carving pictures into the, uh, the tree. And uh, clearly, he cannot be destroyed. So Untamo is like on page 436. He rages because he couldn't kill this kid whom he is clearly afraid of because this is his nephew. Uh, where shall the boy be put? Where will this one be destroyed? Will doom come to him? The boy is hanged on a tree, strung up on an oak. Two or three nights pass, the same number of days too, and Untamo considers it is time to go and see whether Kulero is lost, the boys dead on the gallows, and they find him carving these, uh, carving these pictures uh, on, the, on the tree where he was hanged. So, um, so what Untamo decides to do is to keep the boy and make the best use of it he can as a serf. And, uh, and now what is he going to make the serf uh, Kulervo do? Uh, Kulervo is, by the way, always described as this really yellow-haired, very, very fair-haired uh, uh, beautiful uh, person, uh, and he's often also referred to as uh, one with blue socks. Here he doesn't have any, any socks at all. But, uh, but those are, that's the repeated uh, description. Um, and he's always referred, or very often referred to as Kalervo's son, Kullervo Kalervo's son. So, uh, so what are we going to do with this kid who cannot be killed? And I'm afraid of him. Uh, the, the, the next best uh, way to deal with him is to make him useful. And uh, they make him sit, uh, make him babysit. Uh, he ends up killing the baby uh, by negligence and by malice, both at the same time. Of course, he is. He is very much understanding that he is a serf in his uncle's house. And um, so, so they make him look after a small child, look after the child nicely, feed the child, eat to yourself, rinse out its rags in the stream, wash its little clothes. So Kulero looked after the child one day to broke its head, gouged its, uh, out its eye. Soon after, on the third day, he killed the child with disease. 
uh, flung its rags for the stream to bear off and burned its cradle with fire. Well, Untamo is just like, oh, you were a bad child uh, babysitter. So what shall I make you do? I'll make, uh, make him slash and burn. This is the technique of keeping up the, the forest and field so that you, know, you, you, you burn the, the area so that the ashes then will be good fertilizer for, uh, for growing up crops. So slash and burn, uh, very hard work, very dirty work. He makes him slash and burn, and um, I am off to slash and burn to cut down a sturdy birch. And uh, he, he doesn't do that well either. Furiously, he felled five trees by all accounts eight. Then he put this into words. This is cool level. He declared, spoke thus, to the devil with this toil, let the demon fell timbers, and he bashed the top of the stump, he, he shouted out loud, he whistled, he shrilled, he uttered a word, spoke thus, let the slash and burn be done, let the sturdy birch be cut, and for as far as my voice is he heard, as far as the whistling rolls. So, um, He's, he's bad at uh, at farm, uh, bad as a farm help. Uh, he curses the slash and burn field and remember the, the power of words in Kalevala. So uh, if something's cursed, then it is going to be cursed. And Untamo uh, didn't know what to do with him next. Uh, so he, he wasn't, he was, he was, cutting good trees and, and, and it was, he, he, he was not good at that slash and burn. Uh, he makes him build a fence, maybe he can do that, uh, simple enough a task, but he built, Kulero built a fence that did not have any opening, so you couldn't go through the fence. And uh, he, he says when he's doing it, uh, let nobody get over the fence of Kalervo's son. He's constantly thinking about his father, that he's not going to be doing things well for this man who uh, kills, killed his father, as he thinks uh, that the father had been killed. Uh, so um, so uh, uh, Untamo tries uh, different kinds of, kinds of things. He puts him to thresh rye, and uh, Kulero doesn't do that well either. So he's kind of like use, useless as a farm hand, as, as a babysitter, as a slash and burner, as a, as a, a help in, in anything that needs to be done there on the farm. So what am I going to do with this serf who is not serving well? And I'm going to, I'm going to not, I couldn't kill him, so I'm going to sell him. <coughs> and Untamo sells. Uh, <coughs> sells Kullervo as a serf, and to whom, here's the connection to what we've been reading earlier, he's, he sells Kullervo as a slave to Smith Ilmarinen. Now remember to, uh, to uh, whom Ilmar, Smith Ilmarinen was married, the previous runners, what we've been looking at, they, they have been about Ilmarinen's wedding. Ilmarinen wed uh, the girl from the Northland farm, uh, along his beautiful daughter. Now, uh, Kolero is going to be serving as a slave, Ilmarinen and Ilmarinen's wife, who, uh, whom uh, Ilmarinen uh, well, obviously he married his wife, but anyway, so these are the two familiar characters already from the previous runos, and now Kullero enters their house as their slave. Now, what is he going to be doing there? Um, uh, the, uh, the task was pretty much given to the wife, Ilmarinen's wife, who doesn't, by the way, have a name. This is Lohi's daughter, Ilmarinen's wife. Um, and uh, they are wealthy, they've got a lot of cows, 
and uh, it's summertime, and uh, the cows need to be taken out from the from the barn, your barns to the fields to be, you know, getting their getting their grass, uh, their food on the fields. They were taken far away. Uh, Ilmarinen's wife needed somebody to take the cows out there, and this is the slave boy. So he makes Ullero into a herds, a herds boy, a, a herd, a cow herd. This is a very lowly position. It's not. We we meet these cow herds, and interestingly, a lot of the old cow herds they have wisdom to offer. Here we are uh, putting Kullervo into this job which is not looked upon as a high skilled labor at all. So, um, so Lohi's daughter, Ilmarinen's wife, um, Kullervo's slave owner, um, sends Kullervo to take care of these, uh, these cows gives him food to go there. And here's the key. Uh, she bakes a bread to give Kullervo as food on, you know, this cow herding trip. And uh, she bakes a stone inside the bread. Um, why she does that is just out of spite uh, to show that she's the mistress. She's what, what we find here is like this transformation of this beautiful woman from the Northland that every man wants to marry. Remember Väinämöinen, Lemminkäinen, Ilmarinen got her uh, because he managed to do all the jobs and she also agreed to marry Ilmarinen. So they, they're probably okay with each other, or oh, a happy couple, but she is a mean, mean person. It also turns out that Ilmarinen hasn't been very nice to, uh, to Kullervo either, the, the surf boy, but, but what, what this baking of a stone into a bread indicates it's kind of like this symbol of how badly Kullervo uh, was treated there or their attitude toward a serf boy, a slave boy, whom they, they paid very little for. They kind of like, you know, they list the kinds of things that Ilmarinen gave to Untamo to, to buy Kullervo. And, um, and uh, now that's how he's treated. Uh, this is a turning point in the story. Uh, so far, of course, Kullerva has been kind of like, you know, they have tried to, Untama tried to drown him, burn him, and hang him, and now he is given this, this bread that has, has stone inside. Now, before we get to see how Kullerva deals with that situation, we have this very long uh, runo, which is called to guard a herd. Uh, now the meaning of this is, it, it, it goes and on, it goes on and on, uh, but the meaning of it is that, that uh, Ilmarinen's wife is sending her precious cows into the, the forest, into the meadows, far away from the house, uh, with this this hurt person, and uh, and and the cows mean an awful lot to people in that world. Uh, the cows are a sign of wealth. You get you get milk from them. You get later on you get you get meat from them. But the milk is the thing that that you get uh, get which keeps you wealthy and well fed also your household well fed. So cows are extremely, extremely important in a, in a farming community. So, um, so she gives this long, long chant uh, where she kind of blesses the cows. 
uh, I want you not to hurt yourself. Do not go and step on a swamp where you, you fall into a swamp, your foot falls uh, into, into, into the swamp. It's not probably the foot for a cow, but anyway. So uh, then, then she prays for, for the different pagan gods, uh, Finno-Yugric gods, to take care of the cows, keep them safe. And this is kind of like heartbreaking. You, you don't. We, we are already told that she has baked the stone into Kullervo's bread, but um, but then you kind of almost start to like him because she speaks so. Eff uh, her, the Ilmarinen's wife, she speaks so affectionately and so caringly about her cows, and seems that that's where she has the real caring for, of course, these are, <clears throat> these are the sign of her wealth. She speaks to uh, a bear, um, a, long, a long talk to a bear, stay away from my, my babies, uh, and, uh, and, you know, chants the bears, uh, to bear to stay away, because the, the horrible thing that might happen to cows is that a bear comes and and uh, eats them, uh, rips them apart, uh, happened uh, plenty. So, so, uh, so the, the talk to the bear is long, and then she, in the middle, she also prays to Ukko, the old man, uh, the pagan god, to help against the bear, to keep, keep her precious cows safe. And uh, so it uh, finally ends this long chant to keep the, the god um, of the guard uh, of a herd, the cow herd. And uh, runo number 33 is the broken knife. So here we have, here we have Kuller, well, he builds himself this, uh, this horn. Um, and uh, so that he can make music when when he's herding the, the cows. But here's the here's the tragic uh, bread, the key to the whole story. Uh, Kolarvo uh, becomes hungry during the day, and he's got this bread, and he's he decides to start eating. He takes his knife, and this is not just any knife. It's a knife that he, is his only inheritance, from only memory from his father, Kalervo. Uh, he didn't have anything else, and that is what uh, he uses to cut the cut the uh, bread into into pieces to start eating, and he cuts uh, and breaks his knife when he cuts the bread because there's a stone inside. So there are these different renderings. This is a very beautiful picture, but it shows kind of like the devastation. He's holding his father's knife in his hand. Here's the bread, and there's the stone inside. We see often in these paintings, we see a, a dog together with, uh, with uh, Ullervo because it, it wasn't mentioned at this time yet, uh, but uh, then later on, uh, she was. He was explicitly given, given a dog uh, by by her mother as the only inheritance that he he had. So here we, you know, we see that we see the cows happily eating, and uh, yet Kullervo is not happy eating. Of course, that totally uh, makes him extremely angry because it's an insult. It's not just that you know. Oh, you accidentally put some, put a stone in my bread. It was intentional. Here is another rendering of the same. Uh, same. It shows more devastation. It shows Kuller uh, as as just like totally upset, and uh, he has already been abused since he was born. Uh, here is another one, yet by another. Uh, we we see the cows here. We see the bread here. Uh, part of the knife is inside the bread because it's broken. He's holding 
the rest of the knife in his hand. So he decides to curse um, the, the woman, the Ilmarinen's wife, obviously. And uh, this is a painting by Akseli Galin Kalela. Here we, have, we see the dog again. Um, it kind of is associated with, with uh, Kullerho. So you see different renderings of him, but always he has this very yellow hair that was one of his one of the characteristics of him. Um, a beautiful person who would have had an awful lot of potential except everything will go wrong for him. So here's here's this scene where Kuleva curses uh, not only the the owner of the cows, the Ilmarinen's wife, um, her own mistress, but uh, but he, he curses the cows. And uh, here it says that he turns them into bears. It, when you read the, the story, uh, he, he drives the cows into a swamp so that they drown there and the bears come and eat half of them and the wolves come and eat half of them. But then there is some kind of, some kind of magic um, also, because what he decides to do is, is he decides to take these bears and wolves back, because he's obviously at the end of the, the herding time, he's supposed to take the cows back. It, in the evening, he's supposed to take the cows back, and uh, the cows will be milked then, um, then and, and uh, that's the routine. But uh, he, what he is taking back, is not cows. He's taking back a bunch of bears and wolves. So you see wolves and you see bears, and this is these are the cows have been you know changed into these. Um, how it really happens? There's that Kalevala magic probably, but you know we can just you know imagine that he uh, the, the the cows were either drowned or changed into, into these creatures. Um, drowned in the sunk, they, but they sunk into the swamp. And these came and, came and ate them, and now he's taking them back. Uh, so, it, they, but, but the magic is that he is able to do, uh, kind of govern a, a whole bunch of wolves and uh, and bears. Um, so he has here. We see also the the bears, uh, wolves and uh, wolves and bears. This is a bear and well, whatever they are. But wolves and bears, and he's got his horn. So he's he's leading them um, with with this horn, so people can uh, hear that uh, the what they think is that the cows are coming home. Here is another rendering uh, of, artistic rendering of Kulervo, and you can see, you can see the beasts here um, in this picture as well. Okay, so, um, so he takes these beasts to Ilmarinen's house, uh, Ilmarinen's uh, wife first asks, I'm busy, I'm baking, I don't have time to go and milk the cows, sends an old uh, woman, but Kulervo says, you know, uh, it's the job of you to go and milk your cows, and, um, and uh, Ilmarinen's wife goes there, and according to Kulervo's curse, the cows and the wolf, wolves, they eat, up, eat, him, eat her up, and, uh, and she dies. So that's, that's it. So this is on page 467. Then Ilmaris, mistress, that wife of the careful craftsman, soon rolled over dead, fell to the pan suit in her own cabin yard, in her narrow farmyards. That was how the young wife went, 
and with her the fair mistress who had been long watched for six years long as after to be Ilmaris joy forever and the famous smith's honor. So we are reminded of the fact that this is the daughter of the Northland farm and Lohi's daughter Ilmarinen really wanted to marry her and uh, she has turned into this horrible person who is kind to her animals, her cows, but not kind to a poor serf boy. Okay, so we'll continue with uh, Kullervo, what is Kullervo going to do now? Obviously he can't stay there, he has just arranged the death or the execution by the beasts of uh, Ilmarinen's wife. Ilmarinen is in his smithy, not knowing about this yet. So he starts moving and he's just does this, he goes through these laments, he walks a really, really long way. This is uh, 34 called Father and Mother, interestingly. And uh, he uh, wonders and is feeling really sorry for, for himself. Why was I even born? Because this, I, nobody, nobody likes me, nobody loves me, nobody cares about me. And, uh, and I have also done now uh, this horrible deed. Um, having the cow, cows uh, sink in the swamp and uh, having wolves and bears kill uh, my uh, mistress, my owner, owner's wife. <coughs> so he has, he really needs to escape. He walks and walks, feels sorry for himself, runs into an old hag, and the old hag. Uh, tells him that he is asking him like why well, what, what's what's going on where are you bound Kullervo we're waiting Kullervo's uh, son and uh, and he says um, it has come into my mind the thought has longed lodged in my brain to set out somewhere else to go to Untamos village avenge my kin's doom father's knocks and mama's tears burn the cabins to cinders, reduce them to dust. And the old hag to whom, into whom he has just, you know, run, says, but your kin has not been slain. Kaler was not fallen yet. You have a father alive, a mama on earth as well. And this is a total surprise until now also we have been led to believe that Kullar has nobody in this world. Uh, her father was killed by Untamo and whatever happened to her mother who was pregnant when, when they took her as a slave to Untamo's place, we don't know what happened. But now this old woman, this old hag, uh, whom uh, Kullervo then calls, oh my dear Gammer, Gammer like godmother, a British English uh, word, Gammer. Uh, so she says, no, they're not dead, your parents are alive. Uh, obviously, Kullervo's story was very well known because this woman recognized him, who he was. And the, the old woman tells Kullervo, where they are, how how he can get he can get to to his parents, and he starts walking. This is a long trip. He has already come a long way. He needs to go. Uh, he, he gets very clear directions, uh, or clear and clear. You go the, no uh, Google Maps, no uh, no uh, other electronic devices to to uh, guide his way. 
go northwest and when you see a slope there's a rap there's rapids next to the slope and and just continue and then you then you'll get to this peninsula kind of a thing and and that's where the house is and uh, Kullervo starts walking and of course he is very happy to know that his parents might be alive and very happy is probably not enough to describe his feelings so he gets there and people were like oh there you are and of course there's a mother figure Kullervo's mother uh, the mother figure hastens to say the old woman to declare oh my luckless boy or oh, wretched gold buckled one so with uh, so with eyes alive <coughs> You are traveling these lands when I have been weeping you dead and long since lost. And then the mother reveals that she has had four children, two sons I had once, and two fair daughters. And she has uh, lost both of the older ones, the older son and the older daughter. And Kulerva was the older son and uh, the mother thought that Kulevo has been, has been totally lost and the girl still is lost. So I, uh, I thought I lost the boy in a great war, the girl I do not know where. And then it seems that the, the, the mother tells this long story about how the girl was lost. And this is Kulevo's sister who's been lost. There's one brother and one sister still left there in the in the house, and that's where Kulevo settles. And uh, so so he joins his family, and it, this could be a happy ending, but because this is Kulevo's story, it is not a happy ending for Kulevo, because uh, Kulevo's father, uh, people need to work for their upkeep, so Kulevo's father is thinking, what am I gonna? make you do and he makes him uh, build a boat oh no not build a boat but go you know help with the fishing and he uh, rows the boat so that it breaks breaks and he is sent to help with you know killing fish hacking them into into, into death um, when when you pull the fish nets to um, to the shore then you have to you know kill the live fish and he kills them so effectively that the nets the same gets broken as well so he, he cannot seem to be uh, doing he, he gets this also this bad advice uh, the the person with him on the on the boat is saying, if you pull with all your strength and row as hard as you can, you'll not pull the craft apart nor wreck the ro uh, rowlocks. But Gulerva is strong and he uh, he didn't use his head. He he got this bad advice, and um, he gets again bad advice. Uh, what use is a beater who does not beat with the, with might and main laid on as a man can and pull it off and you know beat these fish so that uh, things got broken. So two things he has tried didn't work. His father is disappointed. Father says, well, uh, maybe maybe to make yourself useful, I'm going to send you to on this errand to pay the taxis. You know, in that world, you paid the taxes in in kind, and you have to uh, transport the money. So you know, for renting the place where you were and and what have you. So take these things to uh, to the tax collector. And uh, we read about the kings in you know in the, the Icelandic sagas who sent their tax collectors or or made sure that the taxis were collected. Um, so uh, he says, um, I'm going to send you 
uh, go and take in the taxis and pay in the rents, perhaps you'll be better traveling, more skillful on a journey. Basically, kind of like sent him away. Now it's winter time, and so he, he sends uh, Kulervo. Kulervo takes care of the job, no problem there. But on the way back, he keeps running into these these women and these maids. And uh, he's a young man. He's interested in uh, finding himself. Uh, Maid, and uh, and he asks the first one. He asks the first one. Um, he's on the way back home, and the first one rejects uh, him. Curses Kuller. Well, may doom come into your sleigh. Disease lie back on your furs. Um, the next one he sees on the ice on the on the ice of a lake. And the girl also again uh, curses Ullerva. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in you. And then he runs into a third girl. He rumbles along, pe uh, paces his journey upon those heaths of the north, the broad borders of Lapland, and he meets a maid, a tin-breasted one, strolling upon those heaths of the north, the broad borders of Lapland. Kullervo, Kalervo's son, he reins in his horse, he adjusts his mouth, he orders his words, Step, maiden, into my sledge, dear, under my quilt, to eat some of my apples, to nibble some nuts. And so he's trying to entice her to come, but the maid says back, and the tin breast snaps, I spit, wretch, upon your sled, tramp upon your sleigh. It is chilly under your, under the quilt, dismal in the sleigh. So the girl refuses. This is the third time he's rejected by a girl, and it's starting to be a pattern. So he takes the girl by force. This is not the first time the Kalevala men are taking, taking a girl by force. And, uh, and uh, the girl, of course, wants out. Let me get out. Give a child her freedom. Remember uh, Kyllikki, when Lemminkainen took her? Give a child her freedom from heeding a worthless me, from serving an evil one, or I'll kick the bottom through. I lay low your planks, your sleigh to splinters into bits to Tolkien. Uh, so, you know, again, a, a curse if you don't do it. But Kullerva, Kalervo's son, the blue-stockinged Kaffir's child, opened a chest full of wealth, slammed the bright lid back, and showed off his silver coins, spread out strips of cloth, gold-topped stockings, his belts trimmed with silver the cloth, <coughs> lured the maid. The wealth changed the bride. So Kullervo uh, bribes the girl um, to come to his sleigh uh, to change her mind of not wanting Kullervo. And, um, and the girl, this is probably also a little bit of a, uh, a story about how we should not let money uh, or riches uh, guide our decisions. The girl changed her mind. And Kullervo uh, Kalervo's son, the blue stocking gaffer's child, there flattered the maid. He took, took a hold, tickled one hand on the stallion's reins, one hand on the stallion's reins, and very gra graphically, um, the other on the maid's tits. So, so um, uh, a trigger warning should have been given to you. So, uh, so th this is kind of a borderlining rape. Uh, it's abduction, borderlining rape, uh, even though he lured the girl to be more favorable towards him by showing her all these, all these riches that, sh that he has. So they have sex. And after that, the girl is like, oh, uh, what kin are you? Who are you, actually? Uh, what kin are you? 
a bold one, of what stock? You are surely of great kin and of grand background. Uh, of course, that's not true, but that's how uh, Kullerva had presented himself. Uh, Kullerva Kaleru's son uttered a word and spoke thus, I'm of no great, great kin, neither great nor small, but only middling, a mean son of Kaleru, a boy with no wits, a waif, a poor child, a stray. But tell me of your kin, your own kin, of your own bold stock whether you are of great kin and of grand background. At this point, the girl uh, realizes what just has happened. So this is, this is another kind of, we kind of get these, these in a way, these teasers of Kuleros life that there could have been changing points that now things could be good maybe maybe he managed to get the get on this girl's good side who initially rejected him maybe they could have been like happy but no there is no happiness for all of them and um, there's even more devastation waiting and the girl realizes when when uh, when Kullero says uh, whose son he is, the girl starts telling the story of how he got lost. She got lost. She went to pick berries, pick raspberries, and he, she she got lost in the woods. And she tells the same story as Kullero has heard from his mother about his lost sister who went picking berries and the mother was looking at, looking for her, couldn't find. The girl is looking to get back home, cannot find the way. And it dawns on both of them what has happened. Um, this has been incest. And uh, the girl uh, realizes that and um, Gulero realizes it, the girl acts immediately. Uh, she runs into the rapids and drowns herself. So it's very dark, it's, it's suicide. Like Aino killed herself by drowning herself. Here we have Gulero's sister drowning herself after they realize that, um, that, uh, that they have committed incest. So uh, Kuleva um, is just devastated. Um, on page 482, woe luckless me for my days and woe wretch for my horrors that I have used my sister and spoiled her my mother bore. Woe my father, my mother, woe, woe my honored parents. What did you create me for? And why carry this mean one? I would have been better off had I not been born, not grown, not been brought into the, into the world, not had to come to this earth. Doom did not deal straight. Disease did not act right, right when it did not kill me, not lose me as a two-night old. So I should have been dead. Um, as a baby. But what can he do? He goes back home and the first thing he says pretty much is he tells her mother what had happened. And it's it's no relief for the mother to hear that her, her daughter has been alive all this time, just lost from home because now she's dead after incest by her long lost son. So it's, it's, it's pretty horrible. And, uh, and uh, Kulero says he wants to kill himself as well. And um, then 
he gets this idea that before he kills himself, he can have himself killed in war. This is a, a suicidal person who, um, who wants to do something that leads to his being killed in a war. You know, you sometimes see on the freeway, you see these people who are just like, you know, riding on a motorcycle, uh, swinging between the cars uh, 120 miles an hour. And you think, is this person suicidal? So that's the route that the Kulero then kind of wants to do. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm going to have somebody else kill me uh, in a war. But I also want to avenge all these bad things that have happened. Uh, my, my parents' place was destroyed. My parents have been basically living, living in exile. Uh, all these horrible things happened to me. And uh, now I have raped or had sex with my own sister, so nothing is going well. I'm going to go up and, uh, and avenge um, against Untamo, my uncle, who is part of all this devastation, and, and maybe I'll then die in that, um, in that battle. Uh, now Kuleru's mother gives him advice and says, um, do not go, my boy, to the mouth of a howling wolf, don't kill yourself, uh, to growling bear's jaws, no, jaws, not the belly of a whale, not a terrible pike's teeth. There's lots of room in Finland and within murky Savo, it's one of the areas in, uh, south, in eastern Finland, for a man to hide from his crimes and, um, and to feel shame for evil deeds, to hide for five years, for six, for nine years in all, till time brings mercy and the years ease care. So the mother initially says when Polar wants to kill, kill himself, she says, just go hiding. In the same way as Lemminkainen's mother had said to Lemminkainen, You've killed the master of the Northland farm. Of course, they will come after you. Just go hiding. And um, these mothers think, you know, pr in pragmatic terms. But then Kulero gets this idea that um, that uh, I I'll not go hiding. Uh, this evil one will not flee. I will go before doom's face to the doors of the grave farm, to the great places of war, to the killing grounds of men. Untamo is still upright. The mean man is still unfelled, a still unavenged father's knocks, mama, mama's tears, still unpaid for, not to think of other woes, my own well treatment, which means, of course, ill treatment. Some ill treatment. They tried to kill this, this kid several times. So um, the uh, mother advises him not to go. Uh, this is runo number 36. Don't, my luckless boy, get into a great war. Don't go to sword clash. He who gets into war without cause, into a fight on purpose, in, in war will be slain and killed in the fight. But that's what Kulerbo actually wants, seems to want. Uh, remember the other mothers who give advice against their sons going to fight, uh, Lemminkainen's mother most explicitly, and then Jokahainen's mother also. When Jokahainen is, I'm going to kill Vainamoinen with my, you know, with my bow and arrow, and Jokahainen's mother pleads him uh, not to do that. So we've got these mother-son pairs where mothers are desperately trying to give advice to their sons who won't listen at all. So, um, 
So mother, uh, Kullervo's mother, continues to try to dissuade him from going to avenge uh, what has happened to them. And uh, she, she says, what's going to happen to us if you, if you leave? Who's going to take care of us? What's going to happen to your father? And Gullar was just like, let him die on the midden. Let him fall in the farmyard. Um, she says, what's going to happen to me? Uh, let her die. Let, let her die, you die, uh, an armful of straw, with an armful of straw and choke in the byre where, you know, the animals live. So it's very mean to his mother at this point. Uh, and the mother, it, as, it, as the story will tell, is actually the one who, act, who cares, who cares about him most asks uh, what's, what's going to happen to your sister, your brother, let them die, I don't care. Like, you know, what did Lemminkainen care in the same way here we have, what did Kulervo care? Kulervo says he doesn't care. But he's still looking for someone who might care about him. He has had this horrible life, horrible things happen to him. Maybe someone cares about me. And he asks his father, "Are you gonna Are you gonna cry when you hear that I've, I've, I'm dead?" Father says, "No, uh, I'll get another son to replace you." Asks his uh, brother, "Are you Are you gonna cry when the word gets to you that I'm dead?" Um, the brother says, "No, no. Nah, uh, there will be another. Another brother will be." got a much better brother, one twice as handsome, asks the sister, will you weep for me when you hear that I am dead? And the sister says, I'll not weep for you if I hear that you are dead. Another brother will be, got a much better brother, a lot cleverer. And then he asks, Kolev asks his mother, um, are you gonna, mother dear, my darling, fair one who bore me, precious one who carries me, carried me, will you weep for me? And the mother says, yes, I will weep for you. And she goes on to describe how much she will weep for Ulem. So the mother shows to him that he, and this is probably one of the, one of the most touching things about Kullervo's story that all along he has had this mother who cared about him. The world, the cruel world, took them apart, but, uh, but, but she did care and she tells Kullervo that she would weep. I'll weep in the sauna secretly, the loft to running waters and the sauna planks to waves. So, Kullervo, despite this, he leaves for war. And again, we, we have his, his dog dep depicted here, even though the story doesn't make it, make it clear at this point. He takes his, his, um, his, his horse and he rides to Untamo's place, and here is this is uh, from not only the inspiration for the arts, but also for the music. You've got uh, Sibelius' Jean Sibelius' name there listed. He's the, uh, he did the very famous Kullervo cool symphony, and um, and it's you know if you sometimes have time, just you know YouTube it. It's it's quite impressive music, uh, classical of course. Um, not of course, because there's been another. There's been a lot of other non-classical music also inspired by the Kalevala. Uh, here he is going going to war to uh, to the war against Untamo, and another rendition. Here, here he is going going to that place. This is probably the most famous picture. This is by Akseli Kallen Kalela, again, and uh, here uh, here Kuleva is going. 
to Untamo's place to avenge all the wrongdoings during his and his parents' life. So, um, so he goes there, he, he uh, murders uh, the necessary people, uh, wreaks havoc and comes back and uh, he hears on the, on the way, already on the way there, he hears that his father has been dead and he needs to come home to bury his father. He's like, I don't care, let the horse bury him. Um, the brother is dead, the sister is dead, the mother is dead. And even for the mother, he's like, let the, let, let, I can't go there now. I cannot yet make it home. Um, Unto is not yet repaid. The mean man not felled, the wicked man not destroyed. So on his way here, he gets this news that, um, that her fam his family is, is dead. So he comes, he, he kills everybody there, he, he takes his revenge and he comes back to his home and he already knows that everybody's dead and that's what he finds. Um, he, he's of course desperate, he's been desperate for a long time. Uh, his mother, he hears his mother's voice. Uh, the mother, uh, he, he talks, he prays to his dead mother. Alas, my kindly mother, what did you leave here for me when you lived upon this earth? But you don't hear me, mother, though I am sobbing on your, on your eyes, moaning on your brows, talking on your scalp. So he genuinely mourns for his mother, the only person who seems to have really cared about him. And the mother, just like Vainamonen's dead mother, the air maiden, uh, replies to Vainamonen and gives him advice. This mother, Ulleva's mother as well, says, um, well, from the grave. The mother woke from the grave, reminds from under the mold, well, I've left Blackie, the dog, so that you can go hunting. Take your dog with you, go hunting yonder up into the wilds to where the forest girls live, the yard of the blue wenches, to the pine stronghold's edges to seek provisions and to beg for game. So the mother, mother says, there's the dog, and take care of the dog, and this is why we have all these pictures with uh, Kuleva, with his, his dog. And um, yet the dog is not able to prevent Kuleva's suicide. Kuleva ends up killing himself in his sword. He takes his sword, he talks to his sword. He says, are you willing to, to kill me? Uh, and the sword is a speaking sword. It, uh, it says, sure, I have killed blameless uh, people. Why, why should I not eat what I like, not eat guilty flesh, not drink blood that is to blame? Kuleros blood. I'll eat even guiltless flesh. I'll drink even blameless blood. That's the speaking sword. And Kulero takes his sword, he sticks it on the ground, uh, the, the hand handle uh, to the ground, and, um, and throws himself into the sword. I think I have some pictures here. Yep. So here's Kulero and his sword, um, and an artist's rendering here. And here, if you go to Helsinki, you see this uh, this statue there in a park where you have Kulero, Kulero's famous sword and Kulero's famous dog at his 
he, he should have thought about his dog and not killed himself. Uh, as I said, um, this whole story has been a huge, huge inspiration. And for instance, uh, to Jean Sibelius, the classical composer uh, who did um, who did uh, his romantic uh, Finnish composer. Uh, he, he did the school of our symphony, but it, is, it has continued its life uh, in new renditions. Um, this was in 2017, when uh, based on Sibelius's music, they did this modern dramatization, uh, dance dramatization. There's a modern school level uh, for you, and uh, also, uh, Kullerva story is, uh, has been very important to world literature. For instance, J.R.R. Tolkien, the one who wrote the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit and Silmarion and so on, um, he was quite inspired by the story and recently his son has edited, uh, Tolkien is, is gone, but his son has edited uh, his manuscripts uh, that were called Kullerva, and here you see the, the blue stocking uh, motif here. Um, so it's, it inspired, of course the Kalevala itself it, it inspired uh, Tolkien, uh, but this is as part of that inspiration. Uh, Kullerva has also <laughs> inspired some gaming, uh, there is this fatal Kullervo, and uh, I don't know if you care about this kind of a thing. Uh, I don't know much about it, but I was just, you know, surprised that, okay, so he's also an, an action a hero, anti-hero. Uh, if you walk in Helsinki, you can find, uh, just on the wall in there in the center of Helsinki, you can find find these kinds of uh, full level inspired uh, statues and uh, and uh, if you are lucky or unlucky you might into run into a, an impersonator of full level there's uh, there's uh, somebody who is uh, kind of depicting the the sad character of full level um, uh, there is full level uh, Rai beer also um, produced. Uh, there are knives that are referred to as Kulerva Puko, Kulerva steel knives. Um, and because that was a central thing, that was his father's knife and that was broken. So uh, here's more advertisements of the Nordic, uh, Nordic uh, knives uh, that are Kulerva knives. And uh, there is a stamp also, or was a stamp, that was inspired by Kullerva, Kullerva going to war here. All right, that was Kullerva's story, and it's uh, time to finish up. Thank you.